Are you all right? Uh, oh, yes, it's fine, yes. Just uh, monitoring stomach acid levels. That's not business-like. It's not even a proper disability. <clears throat> OK, fine. Well, I guess it's just Gerard and me from here on in. Right, Gerard? Sorry? I said it's just you and me from here on in, right? Right, sorry. Sorry, I've got a, a mucus build-up in my ears, so... See you later, then. Cool. Cool, dude. Sit down. Clear your tubes. Cos you and me are gonna chow down on the biggest hairy motherfucking business shitstorm since Enron. Oh, wow. They've got Stalin. What? They haven't had Uncle Joe in for a while. It's nice detail. Yeah, but the detail's not bad. Danger, Mark. It's all right, Mark. They're not toys. They're just models of historical interest. Wow, look. FDR. Right. God. Well, they're, they're not really my thing, so... If you bought FDR, we could get together and model Yalta. Yeah? I mean, I, I suppose, if, if you were really keen. I do want the FDR doll, but is it crossing a line? Oh, my God, my heart's racing. It's like when I bought my first 20-sided die. <laughs> I'd like to buy an FDR doll, please. Of course. It's for my son. He's a big fan of the New Deal, so... Just grab us a couple of uh, Cybermen while you're up on your little stall there, will you, pal? They're not for playing with, obviously. No, I'm just gonna, gonna keep them in mint condition in their boxes. Yeah, of course you are, mate. Hello. Gerard! I'm afraid tickets are only available in advance. For fuck's sake, Gandalf, it's not exactly the Viper Room. This is a private party for live-action role players and affiliates of the International Fantasy Gaming Society. Come on, Gerard, it's me! I wish I could help, but I can't. It's fine by me. It's fine by him. My hands are tied. Close the gate, Raymond. The sickly prince has locked Dobby in his castle and the gate's guarded by his troll. What the hell are you doing in there? Jeremy said I needed a lie down. Oh, that was nice of him. Come on, let's get you home. I'll take you home. Oh, no, no, don't take him home. He's fine. He's, he's just had a bit of a disco nap and now he's ready to partay, aren't you, Gerard? You all right to stand up on your own now? I think if, if you wouldn't mind holding me for a bit. Oh, for God's sake. Could you call us a cab, please? We'll share. The same cab? But but, but you live in Catford and, and Gerard lives in Ballam. That, that's miles apart. It, it's illogical to share. It's crazy. I want to make sure he's OK. Mm. Plus, late at night, minicabs. They're licensed, Gerard. Dobby is not about to get raped, if that's what you're trying so snidely to imply. So let's just cut the bullshit, shall we? It would be more fun going home together. Oh, right, now we get down to it. They're not going to have a better time going home than I'm having at my party. Hello. Yes, I'd like two cabs, please. I need two cabs, one going to Catford and one separate one going in a completely different direction to Ballam. What's that? Yeah, it's just Cyberman attacking Roosevelt. I feel uneasy ab about the noises, Gerard. Anyway, would a Cyberman attack Roosevelt? He's a Cyberman, Mark. He's devoid of all human emotion, concerned only with the preservation of his own race. Of course he'd attack Roosevelt. <clears throat> oh, hi, Jess. Sorry to interrupt you playing, boys. We're not. We're just ar arranging our models with some noises. So, listen, Mark, um, something I wanted to mention uh, about, about Dobby, because I know you two had a, a bit of a thing, but I'm thinking about asking her out. Um, actually, Gerard, there's been something I've been meaning to mention, too. Yeah? You're fired. What? From JLB, you're fired from your job. This is about Dobby, isn't it? A absolutely not. You you're just not pulling your weight. You like her, but you're too scared to make a move and you want me out of the way. That is simply not true. Well, if you try and fire me, Mark, I'll tell Johnson and everyone it's because of Dobby. I'll take you to a tribunal. I will go all the way. OK, well, m maybe I have been a, a bit hasty. Uh, your work is showing signs of improvement in some areas, so uh, very well, after this talk, you're not fired. Satisfied? Oh, my God, I can't fire anyone. I'm like British Leyland in 1976. Enjoy playing soldiers and wanking over Dobby on Facebook. Oh, for God's sake, Jeremy, that's disgusting. Did you ever actually, uh... Well, you know, on occasion. Corfu 06? It's cool, man. I mean, I've never actually gone that far myself. Everything's cool in Dobby Club. Oh, we're the Dobby Club. Or the Dobby Ring. Can two people be a ring? Mark, 
what are you, what are you doing here? I could ask you the very same question, Judas. Uh, well, Dobby didn't have anyone to come to the party with her, so I volunteered. How incredibly thoughtful. Brutus. Yes, well, you know very well that we had a deal. Can't think of another one. Double Judas. Look, nothing's going on, all right? We're just having a drink. I think you're doing a little more than that. No doubt once you've finished these, and she's sufficiently high on E-numbers, you'll try and supply her with another pork product whose name I don't think needs to be said out loud. I'm sorry, Mark, OK? I saw a window of opportunity and I went for it. You'd have done the same. Unlike you, Gerard, I'm a man of my word. The Dobby Club is officially dissolved. What about the HMS Victory? I shall be completing the HMS Victory without your assistance. You can't handle the rigging on your own. You had your chance to help me with that rigging. And you blew it. Hi, Dobbs. Thanks for coming over. Fine, yes, Gerard, but there's a sting in the tail, a scorpion else. in the kinder egg, a nail in the Toblerone, and tis I. Oh. Hi, Mark. Yes. We were about to have a romantic Italian dinner for two when you rang, so I thought I'd come along. Oh, great. Great, yeah, great. How are you doing, you big fox thick? Oh, I feel awful. Oh, that's not the spirit. Mind over matter. Your friend the Cyberman wouldn't be so defeatist, nor would any of your other brilliant dolls. I'll get you a pie on. Which do you want, grey matter pie or brown matter pie? Grey matter would be lovely, thank you. Mm. I know what you're doing, Gerard. What's that, Mark? Being quite ill. I've got my beady eye on you. You're barking up the wrong tree. She's not interested in romancing the stone, Gerard. It's no dice for you and your sickly ways. Yeah. We'll see about that. I'm playing the long game. <laughs> <coughs> Where's your inhaler, G-man? Maybe in the spare room. Ken took the last of his stuff. It feels funny to be all alone. To be honest, if I could just find a pal, I'd ask them to move in rent-free. Don't worry, Mark. I'll take good care of her. Very, very good care indeed. I can't compete with that. A free room at Gerard's versus 50 quid a week for Fritzl's cellar. Gerard's dead. <laughs> what? He's dead. He died. When? Last night, a couple of hours after he called. Oh, Jesus. Fucking hell, Gerard. There was no need to die. God, I only disliked you a bit. I didn't want you to... Fuck. Oh, bloody hell. Things took a turn for the worse. He got taken to hospital, but it was too late. Blimey. What, what did he die of? Flu. He died of flu? Uh, hey, Jeremy. Gerard's died of flu. Bullshit. Seriously? Bloody hell. That is so Gerard. I know. He had a weak immune system, Mark. Mm. He had a weak everything, to be fair, Dobbs. Oh, my goodness. Dead. He's actually dead. He's gone. He's never coming back. He left a message. Do you want to hear it? Oh, God. Uh... Hi, Dobbs. Not feeling great. Don't trouble yourself. Um, I just wanted to say hi, but uh, I guess I'll just say bye. I can't believe you cancelled his call so we could have a frozen pizza and watch The Apprentice. In a way, though, d don't you think that's what he would have wanted? No. I just wish I could have said goodbye to him. Sure, me, me too. I, I, I wish he was OK. I, I, I really do. Hi, Dobbs. Not feeling great. Don't trouble yourself. Um, I just wanted to say hi, but... Uh... I guess I'll just say bye. The reproachful but still quite irritating voice from beyond the grave. <laughs>